be telling guys in this video a uh, video which I had committed to do some time back a very exciting topic power manifestation so this video is going to be uh, maybe a lengthy one but my experience about power manifestation about the consciousness over matter so stay tuned and you know that we gon' rise higher and higher We fly with powers and mountains on our finger Don't worry about we, we got gifted by Swamiji The ultimate space of pure possibility The sky has no limit Nityandam, I welcome you with love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam So, in this video, I am going to creatively introduce or I should say interview not introduce but interview myself about the power manifestation so stay tuned trying to figure out a creative way to present this whole experience so uh, yes power manifestation uh, starting now so before jumping into the subject um, can you share uh, some of the major clicks you had about what Swamiji has revealed to us, to the world, through his discourses and satsangs, and uh, what are the clicks you had about power manifestation? Nityanandam. So yes, quick introduction. My name is Sri Nitya Ashutoshananda, and I have been a disciple of Swamiji since uh, May 2014, or I should say, uh, perhaps March 2014. And uh, in this video, I'm going to share with you my experience of power manifestation uh, in order or uh, with the hope of inspiring you to get in touch with this uh, gift that Swamiji has given us and has made available to everybody. And how also perhaps some of the experiences and cognitions I got about it and, and, and also perhaps remove some of the myths and misunderstandings that um, are out there especially on social media so with that being said uh, yes so what is power manifestation so the main understanding main click i got from what swamiji is sharing with us in various ways about power manifestation is that power manifestation is a natural and pure expression of the space of oneness. The space of oneness is the space we have to be in in order to radiate enlightenment. So when we are in the space of oneness, automatically powers manifest. So manifesting powers under the guidance of an avatar is, um, is kind of helping us to, uh, to, to, to get in touch with the reality of where we are in our spiritual growth, what is the actual status of our inner space? The more our inner space is aligned to the cosmic truth and cosmic principles that Swamiji is sharing with us, the more power manifestation will happen. So by doing power manifestation, we can see the depth and sincerity of seeking that we have, and we can also, um, we can also identify blind spots uh, that are stopping us from having a deeper, more intense and real connection with Swamiji, with Paramashiva. So one of the main things that Swamiji shared with us is the difference between, uh, between Siddhis and Shaktis. Um, so briefly, in the spiritual path, there's a, a very popular um, top current out there that manifesting powers is dangerous for your enlightenment. And um, it is true, but not entirely so it depends of from the context so Swamiji gave us the clarity about what is the difference between a Siddhi and a Shakti so a Siddhi is a power that manifests because of the uh, level of intensity that we have uh, put into a certain kind of spiritual practice when we do certain spiritual practices certain forms of completion happen in us and from this um, some powers can manifest. But Siddhis are actually uh, a hindrance, an obstacle for your, uh, mm, for your enlightenment. It might distract you. Your greed, uh, which ultimately has to dissolve into the, the oneness of Paramashiva, can continue to linger in you uh, 
by constantly desiring power um, for various reasons. So sometimes, uh, so Siddhis, um, Swamiji says that they are considered as an obstacle for, for uh, enlightenment. But Shaktis is a totally different thing. Shaktis are powers which manifest from the space of oneness with Paramashiva, oneness with the Guru, oneness with Swamiji. So that space of oneness is the space of enlightenment. And Swamiji being an avatar, he can simply give us the experience of oneness. He has the ability to simply transfer that experience to you without you doing anything. It's not like you need to, uh, to earn it by doing a certain kind of tapas, a certain kind of penance or intense spiritual practice. No. Swamiji being an avatar, being who he is, avatar of Paramashiva, he can simply give that experience. But what happens is that uh, when we do not do the tapas and the, the penances and all that, sometimes our integrity is, of, uh, is lesser. So what happens is, even if, is um, even if we get that experience, we lose it because our nervous system is not able to, uh, to handle the intensity of that experience. So in order to reinforce the nervous system, we have to uh, do power manifestation and become more and more integrated to Swamiji. So Shakti is one of the main clicks I had because I was wondering, why are Siddhis an obstacle and why are Shaktis not an obstacle? What is the main difference between a power which manifests because of your own efforts through certain forms of spiritual practices and powers which manifest because you decide to surrender to Swamiji, enter in oneness with him, and Swamiji makes the power manifest through you? And the major click I got about that was basically that in the space of oneness, ego cannot thrive. In the space of effort, egos, uh, ego thrives. So one of the main uh, cognitive shifts Swamiji gave me about what is ego, ego is basically a party of powerless cognitions. A bunch of powerless cognitions which are linked together and continue to exist in you and make you and trigger various forms of desires, uh, fears, greed, and various things in you. Uh, which are not allowing you to just fall back into your original space, the space of eternal bliss, the space of Nitya Ananda. So ego is obviously the obstacle for enlightenment. When you do Siddhis, you work towards a spiritual practice. And what happens is that many times when you do a spiritual practice, you are driven to do it by your ego. And, uh, and if you are really intense because you have, for instance, uh, a lot of greed for successfully doing something, you might have, that greed might give you enough energy to reach a certain level where you manifest the power. But the problem is that power manifests from the space of intense greed. So the more you manifest that power, the more you nourish the greed, which is the source of the ego, the source of the party of powerless cognitions. Whereas Shaktis, they happen from the space of oneness. Oneness can only happen if you decide, okay Swamji, I surrender to you, you manifest the power through me. Ego cannot surrender. When we are nourishing ourselves or operating from powerless cognitions, we will never have the courage to surrender. Surrendering, real surrendering, of course there's this hypocritical surrendering which can happen to a certain level, but that does not help you to manifest powers. It does not allow you to go into oneness, it's just more of a social thing where you just act uh, as a surrendering, but when you actually are sincerely interested in surrendering, um, you have to drop the ego. It is impossible to surrender with the ego. So when you enter into the space of oneness, that means that at that moment, you have dropped the ego and you allow Swamiji to manifest through you. Because ego wants to do everything on its own, right? So tell, asking Swamiji to do something through you means you have to drop the idea of doing it on your own. So you need to accept external support in some form. Also, that's one of the clicks I got when Swamiji was sharing that enlightenment cannot be achieved. It has to be given. It has to be gifted. Why? Because if you achieve it, it is only from the uh, intensity which happens from the desires uh, which are created by the ego. But when it is gifted, then you have to surrender it and simply accept it and receive it. And for that, you need to drop the ego and surrender. So that is one of the main clicks I got. 
and why it is so important to practice uh, para manifestation because actually the more you do para manifestation it means the more you are successfully or the more you are uh, entering into that space of oneness the more you enter into that space of oneness the more the powerless cognitions inside of you melt and at some point the complete cognitive shift happens and then you simply enter into this eternal space of oneness with Swamiji, which is enlightenment. So actually manifesting Shaktis is, 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 is amazing. Uh, when Swamiji revealed that uh, and I, I had this click, I was like, wow, the work he's doing is amazing. And that also proves that he's an avatar because only an avatar can make something like this happen. Somebody, somebody who is not an avatar will not find a way to, to make powers as a spiritual practice, which is interesting and at the same time extremely um, on point, it just makes it happen. Power manifestation is just, it just like, it's a real reality check, right? You can't fool yourself. Sometimes if you just read Vedas and Agamas and all that, you will just fool yourself and think you have knowledge. Swamiji was sharing in the Upanishads, it's like avidya, right? Incomplete knowledge. So incomplete knowledge is not going to make you manifest powers. It's not going to give you enlightenment. So manifesting powers, uh, that's one of the, the main thing I got is that manifesting powers is the is basically the highway towards enlightenment but obviously in order to manifest shaktis you need to have guru it is impossible to manifest shaktis without guru everything that happens without guru is siddhi so that is why uh, i feel that the shiva is saying you know in the in the agamas that he comes in the form of a sincere seeker uh, as a guru and the kamik agama he reveals that so yeah so that's basically the main click i got about uh, what is power manifestation and uh, the difference between Siddhis and Shaktis. So you basically went into uh, a power manifestation marathon spree and uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, why you chose consciousness over matter and what is consciousness over matter? What were you know the various reasons why you chose that one, you felt connected to that one and, um, and how does it work? How does, what is the basic principle which is, uh, which is the source of this uh, power manifestation, uh, the consciousness over matter? So consciousness over matter um, is basically, unlike what we see in movies like mind control, mind over matter, consciousness over matter is not the same thing. Mind over matter is a, is a city-like kind of power. Consciousness over matter is a Shakti-like power. Um, consciousness is the source of everything. It commands, it creates, and it is Paramashiva. All the actions of Paramashiva, the creation, the sustenance, the uh, rejuvenation, um, the pulling out of delusion, and the liberation dimension of Paramashiva is, uh, is that. It is consciousness. So consciousness is all-powerful, all-pervasive. So consciousness has all power over matter. Matter is of a lesser frequency of consciousness. So consciousness over matter means you establish yourself in your higher identity, which is Paramashivoham, Paramashiva. And from that space, you command the matter and the matter simply responds. So that's one of the main thing uh, about, uh, that, I, that I got about, paramanifesti about uh, consciousness over matter. Now, in this video, in this uh, sequence of uh, power manifestation sessions I did, I chose the coconut, uh, moving the coconut on the ground uh, for various reasons. One, I think it's a, it's a way of demonstrating the power in the world. It removes uh, various forms of doubts. For instance, when you move the coconut, you know, people always feel, oh, the hand is moving and all that. The trust is not fully there because humans are not always aware and sometimes, you know, they shake or they, you know, there's various things, components which can come into play, which reduce the the authenticity of the practice of course that does not mean the power does not manifest because most of the time even if you do coconut on the hand uh, maybe as a third viewer you might have doubts but the person who is there experiencing it is actually receiving the experience so that experience gives the authenticity to the person who is there but as a third party onlooker onlooker you can have doubts and all that so that's why i decided on the ground so i said at least that doubt will be removed 
And also, also I thought about two, three things, which is people might think that it's tricked, right? So they might think maybe there's wind, which comes and makes it move. And that is why I put a candle in my clip to show that the light is not flickering, which means there is no wind component in there. I did put salt, grains of salt of various size, small and bigger ones on the tablet, uh, which shows that there's no vibration on the ground, which could be responsible for the movement of the coconut. And I also put a level on the table to show that the table is uh, is straight and it's not inclined and, and, and all that. And, um, and basically, yeah, the consciousness over matter happens on a tablet at first with a coconut. That is what Paramashiva reveals in the Agama. And for various reasons. First, the coconut, the water, is a very uh, receptive component. The water inside of coconut is the purest water because it has never touched the external environment. It grew inside the coconut and it is pure water. So that water responds to conscious commands faster. So at the beginning, when you're not comfortable in the power manifestation, you will create the most favorable environment to start to gain the confidence and be successful. And then you will move forward and do this power manifestation with um, more and more different kinds of objects. So the coconut is there and the tablet is also there because of the silicon. Swamji so revealed that silicon has also this component of very receptive to receive conscious commands. So having a tablet helps for you when you give the command to the coconut to move, having the water of the coconut and the silicon facilitates. So it, it, it's like a stepping stone, which gives you a lot of confidence because initially, I mean, we are all facing the space of like, it's impossible. I can, you cannot move, if you live in the normal world, you cannot move a coconut with your consciousness. First, we don't even know what consciousness is. And second thing, like, that's not true, it's just rigged things in movies or superpowers in comic books. It's not true. So the impossibility we have about that is very high. So that has to be broken. Swamiji uh, has to break that space of impossibility and show us that it is possible uh, for us to come back into that space of uh, enlightenment, the space of oneness. Oneness is basically a space of pure possibility. So Swamiji is giving us an experience, uh, or I should say experiences of uh, this space of possibility by uh, initiating us and inspiring us to practice power manifestation more and more and more. And like I said, at the beginning, it's a bit more complicated, but the more you put lifetime and energy into it, that cognitive shift happens more stronger. And at some point it just clicks and power manifestation happens effortlessly but at the beginning some type of uh, little effort from our part is required so Swamiji always tells us um, to chant Mahavakya as we do para manifestation Swamiji has initiated us into this sacred mantra sacred Mahavakya Om Nityananda Paramashivoham so uh, can you tell us more about what you what's your experience and what is the Mahavakya and what Swamiji what is the what, what Swamiji has shared uh, with with everyone through his satsangs and uh, and classes and courses and everything about the power of Mahavakya. So Mahavakya, I, okay, I'll tell what Mahavakya is and my experience when I was doing this power manifestation. Mahavakya, the Mahavakya Swamiji has initiated us into is Om Nityananda Paramashivoham. Om is the cosmic sound. We all know Hinduism is all about Om, that symbol you must have seen in various places. Nityananda means eternal bliss. It is also uh, uh, part of the name of Swamiji. And it means the eternal bliss, which is our true nature. By our very nature, we are Paramashiva. We are established in eternal bliss. And Paramashivoham means, Parama means ultimate. Shivoham means Shiva, shi, uh, Shiva Aham. So Parama Shiva Aham is, becomes Paramashivoham. Parama is ultimate. Shiva is means Shiva or causeless auspiciousness. Aham means me. So Paramashivoha means I am the ultimate causeless auspiciousness. I am the ultimate Shiva. So it's a, a powerful Mahavakya to remind us of our true nature. Uh, so this is the main component of Paramanifestation, manifestation, constantly chanting this Mahavakya within us, sometimes out loud, sometimes inside, uh, and tuning in to Swamiji. Swamiji said this is the, pa the password for Paramanifestation. manifestation. If you chant this, I will manifest through you. So, and it's also like, because it is an initiation for Swamiji, when we chant Mahavakya, we automatically remember Swamiji. And Swamiji is the embodiment of, uh, of that space 
which is manifesting the space of pure possibility, of powers, of eternal bliss, and all these things. So by constantly remembering him, we get in tune to that more and more, and we stop cherishing powerless cognitions, and we align and reintegrate ourselves towards uh, the powerful cognitions, which are the very essence and nature of who we are. One of the experiences I had about, uh, about the Mahavakya is this, actually. When I was doing the chanting, I actually had an experience which really got me into a different space. And I'll tell you what it is now. When I was chanting, Om, I really felt the vibrations coming from my navel center up to the top of the head, to the Sahasrara Chakra, from the Manipuraka to the Sahasrara Chakra. So every time I was chanting Om, I felt there was a current of energy just flowing up my spine. And that was very invigorating. And after that, Nityananda. The Nityananda, for me, the experience I had was after Nityananda, there's a gap. And in that gap, there's a powerful silence. And when I was chanting Mahavakya, that gap was giving me tremendous energy. It's a little bit difficult to explain. You can try it out for yourself, but it just felt like I had this energy coming up and then there's just that cut, right? Nityananda. And then it just pure silence. You know, the vibrant silence of Dakshinamurti, somebody said, right? It's not a dead silence, it's a vibrant silence. And then Paramashivoham and just the end of the Mahavakya. So every time I was chanting, I was constantly having this energy flowing up the spine and this very intense silence which would just you know, enter, like, it would just land on my inner space, like, so intensely. And that was really giving me uh, a next level experience. So, yeah, and the last thing I can say is that, like I said, when you constantly chant, you remember Swamiji. Swamiji is the embodiment of Tyaga. Um, so, when you constantly chant, you remember that space of Tyaga. And Tyaga is very important when you do power manifestation because when you do power manifestation, sometimes you will have restlessness and all these things happening in various forms, whether the body is giving you pains or aches and not cooperating or mind is getting too busy or whatever. But you have to, uh, to do Tyaga of all these things and decide, no, I'm doing power manifestation and realign yourself to that moment and intensely engage with the Mahavakya and the power manifestation. And it's uh, when you enter into that space of that you enter into oneness and that the power manifestation happens. So, um, and when you, when you do Tyaga, you raise your frequencies. You raise your frequencies. See, we exist, Swamiji today was sharing, we exist in 14 different planes simultaneously. There are 14 chakras in the body, seven major ones from the spine to the top, and there are seven ones below, which are not at all popular, but which are there. Uh, uh, what are they named? Sutala, Talatala, Mahatala, Patala. There's few. They're all basically talas. And um, so all these are lower frequencies. So we exist, in some of you were sharing, in each of these uh, chakra, in each of these planes, we have an identity. The lowest is the lowest identity and the highest is the Paramashiva identity. So when you do Tyaga and you do Paramanifestation, you integrate yourself and you enter into this deep romance with Swamiji, with Paramashiva. So, and you, you basically reintegrate and realign yourself to your highest identity. And it's only the highest identity which is all-powerful and all-pervasive and which allows the power manifestation to happen. So Mahavakya is a very good way of remembering that and aligning yourself to that in order to manifest powers successfully. So let's watch a short clip of a Swamiji giving more intricate information about the science, the circuit of power manifestation. Let's have a watch now. So I'll try to explain about these circuits. Understand, universe is not parallel. I'm making this statement. Universe is not parallel. The modern day science tries to claim universe is parallel. No. It is multi-level. So, listen to this.
if a rishi sits here and with will persistence declares brahma has to appear in front of me brahma's throne will shake he has to appear in front of you because it is multi level not parallel listen understand this truth even if you decide to do a small act like moving your right hand the ripple effect of this directly affects the sun you are not negligible part of the existence when you consider you are a negligible part of the existence or you are an accident or you are cursed these are the multiple identities you try to associate due to the frustration and low self identity you give life to that identity because you give life to it that becomes reality listen the good news i have is unconsciously if you cherish even 10000 years you are a cursed being consciously if you declare even once you are a blessed being the conscious declaration overpowers 10000 unconscious cherished thought current because even if 10000 years a room is in darkness one match stick is enough to light it in one second listen all powerlessness all fear all fear related thought currents and all low self inner image you are cherishing which puts you in powerless is not clutched to consciousness you need to understand that they are all there indirectly receiving or sucking the energy from consciousness but they are not supported by consciousness that is why the asuras how much ever powers they may get finally they do not exist only with consciously what you clutch you empower exists so what i am trying to convey with these few statements every idea thought current you cherish in your brain creates certain map if that map can be taken out and inserted on somebody it is called circuit if you cannot take it out it just dies within you it is map if it can be taken out and inserted on somebody said it is circuit for example you cherish a thought current let the whole world be blissful let sada shivatva happen so this thought currents create certain electric signals in your brain certain map if you are able to hold that stably till the other brain vibrates to the same frequency it is called circuit understand my sada shivatva i hold on to that till all of you are able to reverberate to that frequency that is what is initiation one good thing with your brain is it always goes towards the bright side like a water always flows towards the lower end your brain 
any higher frequency it always flows towards it that is why almost everyone says when i sit in front of swami ji all my problems are forgotten that is why when i want to make some decision cherishing my problem i don't want to go in front of him <laughs> because my mind will change if i go in front of him or if i talk to him <laughs> secret Ravana says Ravana's sister Shurpanaga she gives idea to Ravana you are a maya mantri you know everything of magic and changing the forms you can take any form as you want why don't you take Rama's form and go and enjoy sita he says the moment i remember him the fairy frequency all my personal lust disappears <laughs> how can he take his swam the moment my brain mirrors rama's neurons there's no more lust where can i assume his form and go on understand the power and intensity of the rama's existence see when i initiate all of you into powers it is nothing but i just hold that power circuit and sit quietly so all your brain starts reverberating in the same frequency so this map becomes circuit in your system see if it is only in your brain it is called map if it can be reproduced it is called circuit that's all if it becomes alive to reproduce itself it is called circuit like if a lady remains single she is lady if she gives birth she becomes mother so map is a lady circuit is mother that's all actually i am telling you first 10 20 powers only you need to what to say that kind of a little catching up will be like a little work once your brain starts catching up even 10 circuits of these powers after that initiating all the all the powers manif- manifestation is just just like that it's like a sipping cup of coffee that's all i can just have you can have coffee with swami ji and have 20 20 your powers and go it's nothing more than that in the initially the brain need to capture so at that time only all this detoxification parasites cleaning all that is required So you went into this para manifestation marathon. And um uh, for the viewers out there, um can you share what did you do? What was your routine so that you could uh, have experiences of para manifestation? What did you do? Uh perhaps did you go on a certain, certain diet or So yeah, what did I do for this para manifestation? Um actually I started this process after a satsang where Swamiji said you should put your jatas on the head 12 inch which is actually higher than how i have them right now so the next day actually that par manifestation happened the one that i'm going to show shortly happened the, the very next day after swamji initiated said that in the satsang in the daily discourse and uh, i put my jatas all the way up there and there's a, i have a picture of it and um 
And I don't know why, but first the weight and the balance, it, it, you have to keep your neck straight. You can't slouch because if you slouch, your jatas go backwards and the weight, it just distracts you and you can't do it. So you have to constantly, to, in order to be comfortable, you have to be straight. So that's the first thing I realized. It just helps you to have, to remain uh, with a straight spine, which is important when you do para manifestation in order for the Kundalini to happen properly and um, to, to for the, the manifestation to happen. So that's the first thing that happened. And also I had many experiences throughout this, uh, this marathon of para manifestation where I don't know how to explain, it's pretty strange, but so my jatas are locked on my head, right? But at the center of my skull, at the top of my skull in the center, at the sahasrara, around the sahasrara uh, chakra area, I felt like something was moving inside my jatas. At the beginning, I was like, oh, do I have an insect stuck in there or something? I was like, this is so weird, but there was nothing. And it felt like, I don't know, it felt like there was a hamster running in circles on top of my head. I had this very strange spiritual experience. It was very pleasant, actually. It was very nice. And at some point, I just stopped bothering and it was it was happening continuously as I was doing the power manifestation. I don't know what it is. I do know that in one of the satsang songs, he said that when the brain, the non-mechanical parts of the brain get activated, his jettas move because one time he was saying his turban was keep falling off because his jettas are moving because he was downloading content from, he was downloading things from the from Paramashiva. And so I thought, hey, maybe that's a, a small glimpse of that, of how when the non-mechanical parts of the brain get activated, how, you know, actual, the skull, the brain actually moves, it becomes alive. It's not like a, a frozen thing which is uh, immovable um, like we normally would think. So uh, that was one of the thing. Another thing I had, which I don't have now, I, I used a, a cloth which I used to put around my knees and, uh, to, and around my back. I first saw this, um, the deity Ayappa. Ayappa has this around his knees. This is the first, the first place where I saw it. Ayappa was the first deity I connected to when I did Inner Awakening. And he had that strap around his knees. So the legs are basically, feet are together and the strap is across the knees and all that. And it basically allows you to have the knees in the air without and, and rest at the same time. See, when you put your feet on the floor, the floor is supporting your feet. But when you have your knees in the air, naturally by gravity, the knees want to fall and you have to use muscle power in order to keep it there. Uh, willpower and muscle power to keep it there. But when you have that strap, you are allowed to have that these knees in the air and it also creates pressure in the lower spine. So the lower spine has to be straight. And I personally experienced that having that strap for power manifestation helped me a lot, especially at the beginning, because at the beginning, my spine was very restless and uh, it didn't want to stay straight all the time. But that strap makes it so much easier. And uh, it, it makes you aware when you're in that posture, you cannot, it's, you cannot fall asleep, actually. It's very strange. Well, at least that's my experience. But it's very strange that strap, it, it, because of, I don't know what it does, but I can, I can say that you cannot become dull when that strap is on. So I did use that during power manifestation. And of course I was on liquid diet. I was not eating any form of solid food. I was just uh, making soup with vegetables. I was not even consuming the vegetables. I was just consuming the broth. So these are the three main things I was doing uh, during this power manifestation marathon. One thing I can say also, one of the clicks I got, uh, like I was, like I'm share, like I said, the, um, the strap was allowing me to handle uh, the restlessness I was experiencing in my spine. And one thing that happened also uh, is that, like I said, that strap was bringing, was giving me like a, it was helping me to enter into a, a higher level of awareness of my body. And I realized few things at the beginning. Of, after I realized, obviously, I I, I, uh, I consciously uh, dropped these behaviors. But the first thing is that I realized that I had my mouth. I was breathing through my mouth a lot. And I was like, oh my God, this is so strange. So that's the first thing that stopped. Because of that awareness, because I was sitting straight and the jatas and were holding my spine straight and the strap was holding my spine straight, I just realized that, oh my God, I'm not breathing through the nose. So I naturally dropped the mouth breathing and I started to breathe through the nose. Another thing was, I realized that I was daydreaming a lot. What I mean by that is, I would do the sankalpa 
to give to give the command to the coconut to move. And I would do para manifestation, but then I would chant Mahavakya and I would kind of enter into a weird space where I'm kind of carried away by the melody. So I'm I'm technically awake, but I'm not consciously present. I'm just kind of there, like floating. And I I, I was having a lot of a hard time to bring my consciousness back and decide, oh, I'm doing paramanifestation. I was constantly drifting away. And uh, that's one of the main things that happened. And, uh, and then I associated that to one of the things Swamiji was sharing in the 25 states of consciousness uh, discourses, where he was displaying of like, what state gives you what experience. And I realized I was kind of basically cherishing fantasies, just random thoughts, which are just um, removing my awareness from what I was actually doing, which was para manifestation. So I was chanting Mahavakya, and that was before I had the experience of the Om and the, si the silence of the Nityananda. And so yeah, sometimes I would drift up for like dr uh, drift out for like five minutes or ten minutes. Only ten minutes later, I would realize, hey, oh my God, I'm no longer like I'm no longer like present doing para manifestation. I'm just there, just kind of automatically chanting Mahavakya and all that. So that was very important. I think I really felt that was one of the main experiences I got. I just realized like, oh my God. Uh, I, I, you know, that space and I was like, my God, this is what we, we experience on every day and we just don't know it. We don't feel it. We don't see it. We're lost in it. It's like the delusion, right? And then I understand why Swamiji says, you know, when you're more aware, when you take Haritaki, when you take ginger, when you detox your body, you become more successful because you don't have, you don't enter into this space of just wandering uh, aimlessly um, in what you do. Even when you do something, that's what I realized, right? I was doing power manifestation. It's not like I was just daydreaming, but as I was doing, I was not there. So I was thinking like, wow. So even when we work and all that, we are not there and we just don't realize it. So that, that, was, that was a big thing for me, big click. So let's watch another quick short clip of Swamji um, about the 25 states of consciousness and what Swamji says about uh, the space or the state of consciousness that we have to be in in order for power manifestation to happen in us. Internal organs, intra-organs and the states of consciousness you go through plays a major role in your reality either projecting which is completely not there or covering which is there all kinds of manifestation and manipulation of reality happens by the states of consciousness yes you means sushupti yes w means sopna j means jakrat t means turiya T A means Turiya Tita. So deep sleep, dream, waking, awakened, alive. In deep sleep, zero power, absolute powerlessness. Dream, I should I can say that ten unit of vibrant activity and in the waking state I can say 100 unit in Turiya it becomes almost million unit it's a big jump from waking to Turiya in Turiya it is just whatever exists trillion or zillion whatever unit of aliveness the whole oneness it's not even aliveness, oneness. See, when, listen carefully, when mind is active, body is sleeping, we can call that as tired. When mind is sleeping, body is alive, bored. Getting it? If you understand tiredness and boredom, you will catch all the states. Because these two you are very easily. <laughs> Body is fresh, but you don't want to get out of bed. 
means bored mind really wants to go and do the work but body is ah, nothing doing tired your binary existence goes through all these five states independently so this criss crossing happens mind in turiya body in turiya tita this is the state you start manifesting powers all power manifestation starts here understand that flickering flickering where once bottle listens to you second time it doesn't listen to you banana moves once and it doesn't listen to you second time or you say right turn and it takes left turn all that flickering is this state it almost feel like you are there you are there almost so coming down to the main to the core of this um of this experience what was basically the cognitive shifts which ha- which happened in you when you were doing this para manifestation so amje always tells us to remember and uh and contemplate and seek into a powerful cognition and when you seek into a powerful cognition when you enter into oneness with him you uh manifest the power so tell us more about the cognitions which you cherished and perhaps the cognitions which clicked with you as you went as you were going through this uh power manifestation experience so yeah so before i did the power manifestation uh i went into the nitanda nyana padadi which is a, a collection of uh, Uh, scriptural references of shastra pramanas of uh consciousness over matter and there was one pramana which really clicked with me and it was the 28th number 28 and um I'll read it for you here um it comes from the shiva sutras uh 3.18 verse 3.18 consciousness over matter and it goes like this swamatra nirmanam apadhayati and the transition goes like this experiencing that this objective world is the product of his subjective consciousness he can create and manifest any object or matter or occurrence that he thinks or desires in this universe within time and space So that was the main powerful cognition I was constantly contemplating on when the power manifestation happened. Uh it basically says that this objective world even though it are facts and objects it is not real it is a projection of the subjective consciousness of the consciousness that we have. And when you tap in when you enter when you go back to that space of pure consciousness when you drop the ego and the powerless cognitions you can simply manifest anything you want objects matter or situations occurrences in the objective world so it is very powerful so i was constantly contemplating on that as i was chanting the mahavakya and uh and yeah so that was one of the main uh powerful cognition that uh, that clicked with me is really like we have the, it's possible it's just possible Another main click in the cognitive shift I started having very strongly during this uh, experience was not to come to conclusions too fast. I realized how quickly I u- I come to conclusions when things whatever whether things go the way I want or the way I don't want I just constantly it's kind of a, I kind of realize it's kind of a judgment. You kind of judge something. Oh it's not moving. I cannot manifest powers. You judge you know oh it's moving i'm manifesting powers it's just like the constantly coming to conclusions oh my spine is restless or oh, i won't be able to do it oh i'm thirsty or oh, i want to stop it you know we constantly have these things where we just constantly come to conclusions we cannot just stay in a space of pure listening in a space of just pure uh oneness of pure surrendering um so that's one of the main thing i realized and i i really started to see that uh the amount the, the 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 quickness at which i come to conclusions uh which are 
shutting me down from experiencing the reality. When I, when, what I realize is that when you come to conclusions, you close yourself to the space of possibility. Well, then you can no longer, you have to destroy that, you have to remove that conclusion in order to come back to the space of possibility. So I just started to experience like, just don't come to conclusions. Is, is happening, is not happening, That's there's nothing more. Like there's just no conclusion about what it is. It's just a constant desire to manifest powers. And so as you were saying, you know, intense passion with patience. You just, when you come to conclusion, what I realized is that when I come to conclusion, I lose the passion. I no longer feel like, oh, it can happen. You know, I'm just like, uh, I, I become to dull myself down. So I realized that and I, and I started to consciously intervene and stop that and, you know, just say, no, I'm realigning to Swamiji, I'm chanting Mahavakya, I'm manifesting powers. You know, you realign yourself and you go back into that space of possibility. Listen, listen intensely. Liberate your inner space from the impacts and assumptions and quick conclusions of external happening. Listen. If you are meditating, you are Sadashiva. Even if a small problem comes, you give up on your understanding, you are Sadashiva and tries to analyze and justify. No, no, I think still that is not yet become reality for me. Listen, you are not Sadashiva just only if you manifest powers, you are Sadashiva because it is truth. I have seen many people try to gamble with their Sadashiva hood. I will believe I am Sadashiva if this happens. No. If this does not happen, I don't think I am. This truth works for me. How many of you have gambled like this? <laughs> Listen. Your Sadashiva is not an idea to be gambled. You are Sadashiva because that is the truth. <laughs> this gambling takes away the stability of your system to manifest powers. When you understand it is truth, whether what I want happens outside or not, I am Sadashiva is the truth that nothing can be done. I can give 2000 evidences to deny it. That does not mean I can lose my original state. No. You can't lose. With this clarity, with this powerful cognition, I, sh I should not even say it is powerful cognition, it is just Satya. With this Satya when you sit, Even if you are playing in your Facebook, you can manifest powers. It's not that you are Sadashiva because you manifest powers. You are Sadashiva because that is truth. Another space I got also, and it's also uh, another, sorry, click I got also, shift, was that, uh, like I said, like Siddhis and Shaktis, right? With the, the major cogn cognition I got from that, Powers manifest from a space of non-violence. Uh, you cannot force it. If you force it, you will not be successful. Or sometimes you might be successful, but you will not be able to do it again. When you force it, it just doesn't work. Um, and you will not be able to sustain it also. Because you, at some point, you just can't handle the intensity anymore because you're not operating from the right space. So everything has to come from a space of non-violence. Paramashiva is known as Paramashanta Swarupa and that's what Swamiji was asking us to meditate on when we had the Jatas up in the air. Realize that Paramashiva is sitting on the top of the Jatas as Paramashanta Swarupa. So, so yeah, so that's one of the other things I realized is that you really have to enter into the space of non-violence constantly and drop this very aggressive, violent, oriented tendency of just wanting to interfere and you know, force things to happen because 
because you, whatever understanding, whatever logic we cherish at that moment. So that's one of the other things also I, I strongly realize is that you, it's also a manifestation of the space of nonviolence, of ahimsa. I also had a click uh, about uh, Advaita, the oneness. How? Everything that you perceive is a reflection of your inner space. And, and, and what I mean by that is, what I want to get to is, uh, what clicked with me was that if you feel all-powerful, you need to cognize this all-powerfulness outside of you also. And that is why the importance of Guru. You need to, to realize that Guru is all-powerful. Only if you can see that Guru is all-powerful, you can realize that you are all-powerful. So there's always, everything in life reflects different spaces we have. And, um, and we do not see the all-powerfulness in everybody. You know, we'll feel oh, this person has this, this person has that, this has this. You know, some people will have different qualities. Some things are good, some things you like, some things you don't like. But you will never have somebody who is just, whoa, he's just everything, you know, it's the ultimate. But uh, Guru is that. Guru is that being which has no personal interest other than making you realize who you are and who is there to reflect that pure space of possibility, that pure space of powerfulness, which you need to cognize in him and, and then realize in you, because you already, we already have it, but we don't, we are insensitive to who we are. That's why we are suffering, because we lost, uh, we lost ourselves, literally. And Guru is there to guide us back, because he has been successful. Swamji has come back to that pure space. So he has done it, so naturally he can guide us to it. So that is why also, that's one of the main clicks I got. Guru is very important, very important. Uh, in the Shiva tradition, in the Shaivite uh, uh, Sampradayas, actually, in the scriptures, Shiva says, you cannot be successful without Guru. So that's why he says, he comes in the life of a sincere seeker as a Guru. So, uh, yeah, Guru, the all-powerfulness of the Guru is very important to be cognized in order to manifest powers. Otherwise, you can't. If you don't get in touch with that space of all-powerfulness, you cannot move the coconut. For you to get in touch with that space of all-powerfulness, you need to, to see it in Guru. Otherwise, initiation will not uh, will not happen, the oneness will not happen, power will not manifest because again, Shaktis happen from the space of oneness. So that's one of the main clicks I got also by doing uh, this power manifestation. So let's have a quick watch of um, uh, uh, the, the clip of the power manifestation which was recorded, uh, one of them which was recorded during this marathon. So one thing I wanted to share is that uh, first this was in one hour session and the coconut moved from basically the major movement of the coconut happened within the first 45 minutes. So this is basically an extract of the 45 minutes um, increased. The speed is, slight, is, uh, is highly increased here 10,000 times. And, um, and yeah, actually when I was doing the power manifestation, I did not see the coconut move. It's only like after 10 minutes that I realized that it was twisting onto itself and that it was sliding to the side. And here you can see it reached the edge and uh, it pretty much kind of stopped there. Um, here you have four frames, 10 minutes uh, pretty much each at the beginning, 10 minutes in, 20 minutes in, 30 minutes in. And you can see that this is real time speed. So you don't see the coconut moving. But you can clearly see that it moved uh, within within a time frame of 10 minutes. You can see that the, the position and the rotation of the coconut has um, intensely shifted. So having shared all this, uh, one perhaps of the big questions uh, which is out there uh, would be why? Why power manifestation? What is your click or your cognition about um, why Swamiji is... Uh, encouraging us, inspiring us, uh, energizing us, initiating us into the para manifestation. Why should someone be interested in doing para manifestation, in implementing para manifestation in their lives? So, why para manifestation? I would say um, first, it's very important, like I said, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, to have a reality check. You need to actually see where you are. You have to actually experience it. Otherwise, you can make yourself believe anything. The delusion that, uh, that we cherish is very strong. 
and uh, we are able to make our beliefs. Actually, Swamiji will. Uh, Swamiji was sharing about how he was. He's afraid of Vedantis, right? People who just have uh, knowledge, uh, which is not complete experience. So it's basically an incomplete knowledge, and. He says that only with knowledge you cannot be successful because mind will always find a cunning way to turn whatever knowledge it you have to go in the direction in which mind wants to go. And mind is a product of ego. Until mind surrenders and obeys to your conscious um, command, mind is running your life and mind will be uh, fueled by the, parallel, the party of powerless cognitions that we have as ego. So that's one of the main thing, uh, main thing I realized, and it's very important because if you if you're really sincere and you want to be successful and raise yourself and get out of suffering and and be enlightened, experience oneness with Paramashiva, uh, you need to be real with yourself. You need to be willing to be real with yourself. And if you're on, if you're deluded, you need to have the courage to say, "I'm deluded right now. I am deluded." So like that, power manifestation helps us. Uh, power manifestation helps us to just you know keep track and of where we are and where is our inner space. What is the status of our inner space until we enter into that pure space of oneness, that eternal space of oneness, uh, space of Paramashivam, oneness with Guru. With Swamiji. Understand, Sadashiva always wants you to first study Vedas because Vedas is the logic of truth. Agamas is the science of power manifestation. If you are directly given the science of power manifestation, you will gamble it. Oh, if I manifest powers, then I am Sadashiva. If not, I am not. You will start gambling with this truth. That is why first the Vedas, Vidya is given. This is truth whether you manifest or not. If you just stop with Vedas, that's also not complete. If you just gamble only with Agamas, that is also not complete. Intensity and continuity is one and the same, is complete. I tell you, all great successful people had roots in Vedas and wings of Agamas. They were all rooted in the Vedas. Means, the truth is truth because it is truth. Manifestation is a natural mandatory process of the truth. Listen. Natural mandatory process, that is the right word. I can't use the word mandatory, then it will become all about effort. I can't just use the word natural, it is all, then it will become all about laziness of Vedanta. Ayo, which I am afraid of. Arivaru gajamum manjen. Ayiram diyum manjen. Masusai makkal lanjen. Yesidum iniyarku manjen. Ariyar asadigandu ammanam anjumare. I am not afraid of people who abuse, defame or I am not afraid of the mad elephant or I am not afraid of the forest fire but I am afraid of the educated people's laziness, lethargy justified by their education. Ariyar asadigandu amanam anjumare And yeah, because uh, the blind spots we have are very subtle, very, very subtle. Unless you have a very high level of awareness, you will not find them. Um, so Guru is there to give you that, you know, that awareness. He removes patterns from your life uh, and para manifestation does that. It removes patterns from your life. Like, like whenever you remember Swamiji, you constantly realign yourself to that and, uh, and it just removes ignorance from your life.
blind spots from your life. And that allows us to come back to the, the, the ultimate identity of Paramashiva, the ultimate space of Kailasa, right? So that's why Swamiji is reviving Kailasa and reviving para manifestation because it is the, the highway. It's like, a, it's like, you know, it's like crossing an ocean with an airplane, you know, it's the, it's the quick path towards uh, reintegrating yourself completely, completing with yourself. Because sometimes also Swamiji shared and that really resonated with me is that sometimes we experience a bliss, but it's not eternal bliss. It's a bliss that happens in between two zones as we travel upwards towards higher frequencies. But only if you have Guru, the Guru can guide you and make sure you don't get stuck, you don't stop in these zones. Sometimes you, you stop there and you think, oh, I got it. And you just stop. But then it goes away because it's not permanent. So Guru will not allow you to settle down in these sweet spots and he will drive you all the way through uh, the ultimate experience, uh, which is Kailasa. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much, uh, that's, that's basically the, my experience about my manifestation. So thank you for watching. Um, this was my experience of power manifestation. There's going to be more uh, content and videos like this coming in the near future um, about other forms of power manifestations or other experiences of power manifestations, other recordings of power manifestations. So really hoping that uh, your answers were, uh, your questions were answered by this sharing. If you have any question or comment, really put it down below so I can read them. I go through all the comments and, uh, and I can answer it in a message or perhaps in a video if it gets a little intricate. Um, so I would really want to know how you feel about this and everything. Uh, yes, like this whole recording and this whole session of Power Manifestation was recorded in the way to reduce as much doubts as possible, the various types of doubts that people have about power manifestation. So, um, so yeah, I would like to hear from, uh, from you and, uh, yes. And also don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, click the bell icon, share this video with people so that people can get informed about what the great work that Swamji is doing and the importance of reviving Kailasa, the importance of power manifestation in our lives and, uh, and how, yeah, how can Swamiji enrich basically the life of pretty much anybody who is actually interested in enriching himself or herself into these great spiritual truths, uh, the cosmic principles that Sanatana Hindu Dharma, Hinduism is uh, radiating, is the source of and, and how it is important also for people to go back to the source in order to have an authentic experience. When you get diluted information, you get an incomplete experience. When you get an incomplete experience, you uh, get more deluded and uh, you, uh, you cherish that, that delusion keeps lingering inside your inner space. So the purpose of all this is to get rid of that and to enter into the space of Paramashivoham, oneness with Swamiji, oneness with Paramashiva. And uh, yes, so thank you again for watching. Uh, very much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next video. Again. And if you're alive, you gotta have the right intentions. The avatar is back. Just thought that I should mention. Just look for divine and his blissful intervention. The birds don't fly without his permission. We floating in the sky, flying with the fishes, diving deep in the ocean, swimming with the pigeons. See, our world is different. A highway sprint. The powers we print in our heart is footprint. And you know that we gon' rise higher and higher. We fly with powers and mountains on our finger. Don't worry about we, we got gifted by Swamiji The ultimate space of pure possibility The sky has no limit And if you look high, you'll see Swamiji in it The sky has no limit Truth, the sky has no limit